Section 10 2, example 2. So there are five different colors of Skittles, red, orange, yellow, green, purple, and we're curious about their distribution. And we ask, do all five colors occur in equal proportion? And so this can be answered with goodness of fit. And that's because, we're, again, we're looking at proportions. So we're in proportion land. But we have five proportions, not just one. So that's why we have to use good goodness of fit. Um, so we're gonna buy a bag of Skittles with 63 Skittles as our sample and take note of each color. So we have 13 reds, 16 oranges, 11 yellows, 15 greens, and eight purples. Um, and we wanna know, does the data provide enough evidence at 5% to show that the true distribution of Skittle colors is something other than uniform? So uniform, just means equal proportions. So let's go ahead and set up our hypothesis and our alpha, and then we'll start investigating. So H1 is kind of our equal case. All the proportions are the same. So in math world, it's P1 equals P2 equals P3, P4, up to five. Um, in everyday language, it just means that the distribution of Skittles is uniform. So the Skittle colors are uniform or equal proportion. So you can use one or the other. Your choice. Do you like uniform better or equal proportion? Whatever words make more sense to you. And then what we're trying to prove is that it's not uniform. So it'll just be the opposite of this. Skittle colors are not uniform or not the same proportion. Um, it could be that they're all different, right? One, two, three, four, or it could just be two of them are different. So that's why we don't write it in math form because we don't know. It could just be one color is different, but the other colors are the same. So words are easier. So alpha is just our significance level, which is 5%, so 0.05. And we'll go ahead and set up a table to find chi-square. So we're not doing a z-score or a t-score. There's five categories. It's just not possible. So chi-square does it for us. So we're going to set up color, red, orange, yellow, green, purple. And then we'll have the O column, which is our sample. We'll have the P column, which is the percent. Um, and then we'll have the expected, which is N times P. And then our final column will be O minus E squared all over E. So get that table set up and we'll get started in a second. If you try to do this without a table, you will most likely get lost. The table makes it really easy. All right, so I'm gonna start filling in. So observed in our sample is just what we observed. So 13, 16, 11, 15, and eight. This one's a little tricky because the percent's not given, but we can figure it out. If they're all the same, and there's five categories, that means each category needs to be one out of five, or 0 0.2, 0 0.2, zero, or 0.2, for 20%. And we could check, confirm that these add up to one, right? All the categories should add up to one. And so we'll use this to find expected. So expected is just gonna be that percent times the total, which was 63. So 0 0.2 times 63, and what's nice about this is they're all the same, 12.6. Oh, <laughs> um, my dog's growling. So if you did 12.6 times five, you should get 63. So what this is saying is that if the colors are uniform, they should all be around 12.6, right? One might be 12, one might be 13, but they should be close to 12. 
So some of the colors are maybe a little too different, like maybe green and purple are kind of far off, orange is kind of far off, but maybe red and yellow are kind of closer. So we have to find those little mini Z scores and add them up. So we're gonna go ahead and do O minus E squared. So 13 minus 12.6 squared, make sure it's in parentheses. And divide by 12.6. So our first little mini Z score will be 0 0.013. I'm gonna do four decimal places, three decimal places. So 0 0.0126 rounds up to 0 0.013. And then our next one will be 16. What's nice about this is E doesn't change. Minus 12.6. Square that, divide by 12.6. And you should get 0.917. Right, this one's a little farther off, so we got a slightly larger value. And then we'll keep going. So next row for yellow, we'll do 11. 0.203, right? It's a little closer because 11 is closer to 12.6. So it's a little closer to zero on this one. And then green and purple, I think, should be a little farther because they're a little bit farther from 12.6. So the next one we get 15. So for green, we get 0.457. And then we'll do purple. I'm thinking should be the farthest off because eight's pretty far away and I get 1.679. So these are like my mini Z scores. None of them are too far away, um, but maybe when we add them up, things change. So let's go ahead and find the total, and that's our chi-square value. So it's a bit of a longer step, but then after this, everything should feel similar. So 3.269 is chi-square. So this is my new value instead of Z. We'll use this. So maybe this one's not too far away, but let's see what happens with our p-value. That was step three. So now we'll find the p-value. Um, remember, chi-square is always right-skewed. So it's not a normal curve, it's a right-skewed curve. Um, degrees of freedom is categories minus one. So we have five categories. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll take away one. So degrees of freedom is four. So that's kind of where my peak is. And then my chi-square value is 3.269. So that's actually gonna be farther to the left since four is to the bigger. So 3.269. So I think I'm gonna get too big of a value here because I've shaded so much of the curve. But let's find it, p-value is chi-square CDF. Our lower is 3.269. Our upper is infinity. Remember, it's always right-tailed on these. And then degrees of freedom is four. So go ahead and type that on your calculator to get the p-value. So although the steps are different, um, p-value has the same interpretation. And I get a, got a p-value of 0.5139, which is way too risky. It's way bigger than our cutoff of 05, right? If the Skittles were uniform, there's like a 50% chance that this would just randomly happen, which is every other bag of Skittles. So it could totally happen at random if Skittles are uniform. So we're gonna not reject it's too risky. Our evidence is weak. So we're just saying it still could be uniform. Our bag wasn't different enough. So there's not enough evidence to show And then we'll state our level at 5% to show what that Skittles are not uniform or Skittles or something other than uniform. So we're not saying for sure they're uniform, we're just saying our bag wasn't different enough to disprove it. So there's not enough evidence to show at 5% that Skittles are something other than uniform.
our bag of Skittles was close enough that it's possible. And that's the hypothesis test. So concept wise, it's the same. It's just the middle steps get a little messier because it's a little bit harder. Um, once you add more categories, it's more work. But once you get to the step four, it should start to feel very repetitive. And that's goodness of fit.